Greetings, one and all, and welcome to this interview slash Q&A with Mark Simmons, the CEO of Free Jam. I would just like to take this opportunity to just mention we were having Skype issues at the time of this video, so there will be some cuts in odd places and a couple of the segments my audio was slightly muted. If that was the case, there will be annotations on the screen to say exactly what the question was I asked. I think this only happens once or twice, but it does bear mentioning at the start of the video just to avoid any unnecessary confusion. So during the video, Mark is asked a series of questions about Robocraft, about Free Jam, the future of Robocraft, the past of Robocraft, and all that kind of stuff. Everything said here isn't necessarily going to be concrete for the future, but certainly has a good bit of insight into the future of Robocraft as a whole. So with all that said, let's get straight into the video and let's see what questions were asked and what were the answers. So now we're up, we'll have no more issues now, especially since it's only two people as well on Skype. So please answer that again. The question was about powering down items. Is that something viable for the future, in particular with movement types such as legs, rotor blades and stuff like that to make movement easier on hybrids? I'm struggling to concentrate, so I'm currently looking at a picture of Rick, like, looking really mean at me, and it's slightly scary. Um, the, yeah, the basic idea, I, I love the basic thought and the basic idea, and so what I'd like to do is just brainstorm it with the deaths. The only, reserv the only reservation is about complexity, because um, we sort of want to create a game where you can play it without having to have octopus fingers on the keyboards because the, the more complexity we, we add which you, which you really can't succeed in the game without using that complexity it, it increases the barrier to entry to enjoy the game and therefore reduces the overall player base um, so what we want to do is ultimately give you all of those things and get rid of all those frustrations in a way that is the simplest way possible you know, generally we try to make sure that stuff like the legs just doesn't do that annoying stuff anyway. But if that's not possible, um, adding extra configuration and extra controls is a good next step. So I think it's just we've got to take that one to the brainstorm room and see if we can turn it into something we can give you guys. Well, yeah, well, that certainly makes sense, trying to add more stuff whilst not making it too complex for new players, I can imagine, is one of the biggest struggles in a game like this, where you can actually build your own robots. Yeah. It can be a bit of a balancing act. So the next question, which is one I got a load of thumbs up for and came in many different versions, is will there be any other mega weapons or mega movement parts in the future? Um, meg mega weapons, mega movement parts, the whole mega thing is something we're still talking about at the moment. Um, what we've uh, you know, I would say what we've struggled to do is really incorporate the megabots well into the game because the uh, in TDM sometimes they're really fun and for some other players find them frustrating to have in the battle and um, there and lots of people want to play as megabots and that creates long queue times. And those kind of, so we've been struggling with a lot of issues around megabots. So mega mega parts and mega things is something we're just talking about a lot internally at the moment. There's some plans, but I can't really share them right now, just because we're still trying to firm them up. And there's some things we'll be releasing as in, as we get closer to doing stuff with megabots um, in the time to come. Yeah, I can certainly imagine that. I mean, ever since megabots were introduced, it was so polarizing for the, for yeah. the community as a whole. Some people loved them, some people absolutely hated them in their entirety. I personally like them, but I like them being in the battle, but I hate playing as one, so it's a bit of a weird yeah. one for me. But... <laughs> okay. Well, we've just been struggling with it, making them for everyone, and this is this has been a hot topic in internally, so we'll have stuff to share on that soon. Okay, brilliant. So the next one, and one that, which I actually am very curious about, is will there ever be modules for the lower ranks, or perhaps just modules which are less CPU intensive in the future? Oh, okay. Well, that's, that's a good thing for me to talk about. So our whole process from the beginning of the recent major changes we've been going through um, 
and we're still ongoing through those changes, a maximum loadout was a big step towards it, has been to what we describe as flatten the game. So we used to have a game which was all about tiers. It was tier one to tier 10. Yeah. And, and it was essentially a game where you had small SMGs and you upgraded to the bigger one and then you played for a bit and the small one became obsolete and then you got the bigger one and gradually you worked through the sizes. And this had the side effect of subdividing the player base into 10 segments each tier. And that had the side effect of meaning longer queue times and less players could play together and less diversity of robots because in the first tier the new users could only see SMGs because they wouldn't unlock the plasmas until the second tier, mm. until the third tier. And so the new users would see quite boring robots with only SMGs on in their battle. So we wanted to create uh, more players online, lower queue time so that we could add more game modes and all of that kind of stuff in the future. And this is, I'm talking about the long term future here. Yeah. And, that, and that meant reducing the difference between a weak robot and a strong robot, i.e. removing the tiers. And that's the process we've been going through. Okay, yeah. I, and I, so, I don't understand that. So ultimately, we're not there yet, but we will soon be in a situation that, that, that rather than being a game where you're going through the tiers, will be um, a game where all tiers can, all the types of weapons and components can be put played together in one battle. Um, it's hard to explain. It was explained a little bit when we talked about it in on the forums. But our ultimate goal is to provide much more variety and ultimately allow the, the modules and all components to be used in any kind of size of robot. And eventually we'll be matchmaking players by CPU and robot ranking won't exist anymore. Yeah, I have actually heard of that and that actually leads into a question a bit later on the list. So let's ask that one now since you just brought that up. Sure. To do with the matchmaking, so are you going more towards a skill-based matchmaking rather than a more of a metric sort of uh, matchmaking, so I have heard that brought up before by other people and then there's actually a lot of people asking that question, so clearly they've got it as well. So, yeah, so we, 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 we have to match make robots by uh, their size at least, because obviously course, yeah. a low CPU robot that's just 100 cubes, say 100 CPU versus a, a 1500 CPU robot won't stand much chance. So we, we, our first port of call is to kind of match make robots based on their side. And then we use the skill of the player, we have our own algorithm for, for determining that, to uh, just tweak w what types of robot or size of robots they'll be playing against. We already have that in place. But cur currently that tweaks the robot ranking. And when we move towards CPU based matchmaking it will tweak the CPU so it will just tweak the size of robot that you're playing against. So if you're a high skill player you'll be playing against slightly bigger robots and vice versa. Okay, yeah. Until you get to the top end, so if you're the biggest robots in the game then obviously we can't matchmake you against bigger robots so that that's the top end and that will always be mostly about the top skill side of the game. Okay yeah that certainly makes a lot of sense there. So Le leagues, just to point out, leagues is different. Leagues is totally matchmade by rank. Oh, of course, yeah. Um, are there any more cosmetics coming in the future? <laughs> that was actually really well. Um, that was a really well received question. It seems that people want to spend galaxy cash on shiny things. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think what we've been focusing on, obviously, is delivering things we think will excite the community the most. That's why we focus on new weapons and we're always, most of the conversations we have is what can we do next that will excite the audience the most? You know, what, what would they like the most? And then we try to develop that. Um, uh, in terms of the cosmetics, I suppose we, we, we see them, although a lot of users like them and they would be things that might uh, monetize for us, for GC. That, I suppose they're never the most exciting things. We don't see them that way. But we, we, we are making a lot of cosmetics. A lot of stuff we're doing and we'll be releasing soon is a lot of more of the kind of co-promotional stuff we've been doing with um, Overwolf and people like that. We've got some more yeah. um, things like that in the pipeline. So okay, that's awesome. uh, there's some really good stuff like that to look forward to. Okay, really cool there. Um, 
With okay, this is a weird one because it does. Um, it, I hope you perhaps have seen this video or this idea floating around in the not so well. Actually, it has been a fair while now. I was going to say the not so distant past, but actually, it has been a while. With the concept of a sprinter leg or a different kind of mech leg, it was done by the Awesome Soul. I really hope that's a YouTube name. I actually watch him, which is the worst thing there. But getting usernames correct is always difficult for me. But um, the idea of having different legs, if you haven't seen the video itself, just different kind of mech legs for different purposes. No, definitely, definitely the answer is yes. Oh, okay. Um, the answer is yes. I mean, of course, we want we want to do... We see there's a lot of... There's an awful... So much we can do with just variants of things, you know, like wings that can... Um, well, many people have suggested to us in the past VTOL wings and... Mm. and and there's so many ideas out there on the forum. So things like sprinter legs and, and, and ideas like that to us are no-brainers and we should definitely just do them. I, I honestly can't tell you that if it's, it's on, on our plan for the near course, future. Because we've got, we've got, we're, we're really busy, we're doing so much. Um, and the team, team are working crazy hard. But um, for us, you know, that's a no-brainer, of course. It's a good idea. It should go in the game. Okay, uh, the next one I'm quite quite curious about your answer, because I, I have actually seen the, this question answered a few times, and this is an idea that got very popular a couple of months ago, and it's quite a long question again, so I'm just going to quote from it. Will they ever add spinning platforms or stationary weapons? Actually, I'll just leave it at that. So the concept of being able to put weapons on a uh. movable platform in addition to the robot. I mean, a lot of us can certainly see the problems with this, but also the fun factor is what yeah. It keeps on making people want the idea, but I'd like to see your answer just because, again, this way I've got it on record and everyone keeps asking this one. I think this is one of the ones we, this is one of the ones that we struggle with, you see. I mean, it's really, we, we've, had, we've actually had prototypes of that stuff working uh, in the past, and mm -hmm. so it's, it's not that it's necessarily technically difficult for us to do, but when we try to fit them into the gameplay, um, it then starts to become an issue of how do we make sure that they make the game better and usable for everyone and actually make the combat better, etc. Um, it just becomes a difficult one to solve. So for us, there's still it's a really awesome idea and obviously we, we would pay close attention to anything that creates such buzz in the audience and that video you know, so many people repeatedly go back exactly. to it. it. It's really hard for us to ignore that. Um, I think what we struggle with is how best to integrate that idea into the game. So for us, what we have done is said, okay, we want to revisit this idea, but it's not something we're working on in the near future. Okay, as yeah. What I'll talk about in the next few months, just because for us, we like to keep coming back to the idea and saying, well, what if we did it this way and what if we did it that way? And sometimes it evolves into something that will really work. And then we go, yes, that's it, and we'll, we'll, we'll work on it. So. It's just one of those ideas that we we love the idea. We prototyped it, that kind of thing before, and it's lovely to play with that kind of physics, particularly in Robocraft. And we know our players love to kind of play with that kind of technical stuff and really exploit it to create builds that are really unique. And, and we love that side of it too. Um, so, yeah, I would just say we're doing other things first, but we we're not we're not ruling it out. That's all. Yeah, that's actually a, a really nice answer to it. Like, um, knowing about the idea and actually working towards it in the future, but of course with all the issues currently, I can certainly understand why that has to be pushed back into the future. Okay, the next question is something which really doesn't affect me, but does affect quite a few of the commenters apparently. Is there anything in the works for P5 players, instead of simply hitting the ceiling of the current ranking system in Battle Arena, perhaps different modes or any ideas which are currently in the works? Or just being thought about, of course. You mean, um, you mean is uh, unique stuff that could be unlocked for people who have reached that, uh, that stage of the game? Yeah, um, how, how the question is being phrased, it's more, is there something else to do once you've reached that point? Because yeah. um, once you've reached it, some people think, well, I'm just going to stay here then. Yeah, well, it's a bit like a race, isn't it? Like the, We give the guys hard things to achieve, like get to Protonium 5 star, and there's like these amazing players in the audience that like do it in virtually no time at all. And you're like, oh, God. Now we've, we've got to... So you, the, the players just get to the content that we create and the new stuff we create so fast that we sort of struggle to keep up. 
Um, I think, I mean, it's amazing some of the players have been playing as long as they have done. Some players have done like 3,000 hours in Robocraft and we're always just completely blown away by that fact because we think of our game as not having enough content and we, and we work really hard to try and solve that. Um, obviously we try and strike a balance between making content that um, applies to the whole audience and then a, a content that is especially for those players that have reached the highest echelons of the gameplay. I would say that I, we haven't got any plans to do anything specifically for those guys, but I would say that those guys probably fall into the category of please give us clans. And I've said a few times that um, that's stuff we're desperate to bring you. Um, so we're in a phase now where we see ourselves as striving towards getting to beta, where we see the game in a good state and we don't want to make these crazy, strange changes to the, games, the game anymore. And so we're working towards beta and when we, when we get to beta and we, we, see, we see the shining light in the, at, at the end of the tunnel now, um, once we hit that point, uh, one of our top priorities will be all of the social stuff and clans and all of that stuff. So maybe that would be what they would move on to next, being the best clan. Yeah, funnily enough, that was actually the very next question about clans, so you have um, just answered that one invertedly. So after that, uh, this one comes from Gotcha. Can I, can I just say, we will add a Danish flag. You were like, ah, oh, that was like two questions down. You could have just let me get to it, but I completely understand there. Okay, the next question comes from Gotcha. Um, would you ever consider introducing a drone-specific item so that they would not need to use other flying parts so you could balance drones and flyers separately? That's the basic gist of the question. Me, definitely, yes. Um, we don't dislike drones at all. I mean, I fly them, I love flying them, they're really fun, and so I understand the draw. And so what we try to do is strike a balance, because currently building drones is very difficult for you know your average user, and flying them is quite challenging, and playing them well is quite challenging. So they have quite a high barrier to entry to play. Now adding a drone-specific part would actually be one way to help that, because then they become easier to build. And then obviously the guys that build them really well will find ways to use that component. I mean, obviously we tried to make Robocraft semi-true to the world of physics. So, <laughs> um, it, you know, it'd actually be an idea that was linked to physics E, uh, you know, along the lines of gyros and that kind of thing. So, yeah, the, the idea of adding parts that specifically allow you to make drone and small flyers and agile things that you have a lot of control over. Maybe new types of flying uh, components that give you a lot of extra types of ways to move around. But these are all the sorts of things we'd love to add, so of course. Okay, yeah, that, that's, uh, that's also really good to hear because of course people are either crying about drones being too powerful, too weak, and having more elements to be able to tweak without affecting other elements has always been an issue for people, uh, I'll, I'll say almost like me as well, who try to use the more traditional flyers just a plane. So when rudders get nerfed or aerofoils, it's always a fear that our bots yeah. will also get inadvertently nerfed in the process. Not really had that much of an issue recently with flyers, in my opinion being quite fun at the moment, but of course times change, patches, yeah. you get the idea. Yeah, so, we're, oops, sorry. We're, we're, what we're trying to do is not, we're trying to do less knee-jerk balance stuff and let the meta try to control itself by, so we, we, with the rocket launcher and the aer aeroflax, we tried to provide m mechanics that allow the player base to control the meta, so if there was lots of flies in the air, then you could start to see more and more aeroflax on the ground because that's easy pickings and that would then reduce the amount of air and then because there was hardly anything in the air, the aeroflax would then adopt SMGs and then it would go in a cycle like that over time. And those kind of meta shifts we th thought would be quite interesting in the in in the game and then we would start to try and add more uh, components on a regular basis and that would keep the meta fresh and that's what we've been focused on. Um, but obviously we are tweaking the balance all of the time, just um, luckily now we can tweak the balance without needing to release new clients so that's been a lot easier. Yeah. 
Yeah, that, yeah, that's always understandable. Every time you change something, there's always going to be knock-on effects. So trying to get a perfect balance is really impossible. It's just trying to do the best you can with what you've got. Um, okay, the next question is one, again, I'm quite interested in. Um, are there going to be new maps in the future? And are there any unique ideas about these maps? Possibly water maps or lava or damaging areas? Something of that nature. Uh, yes, of course, all of that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Lava is glorious, excellent. Yeah. Lovely to hear. So, uh, the next one, I do love to ask you this, but it is easily the most asked recently, and I'm sure Twitter and for You certainly pay attention to Twitter and Reddit and everything, so I'm sure you've had the question. Uh, in terms of RP, where do you see it in terms of getting a fully sought out tier 10, sorry, maximum ranking bot with all the weapons you want? How much game time would you need from start to finish or from once you've reached the maximum ranking? Just general ideas about RP, really. There, there was loads of questions. I've got like five of them down here, and that's kind of all of them combined, so. Yeah, yeah, I mean, you know, as a, as a company, we've, we've always tried to be super fair with the whole idea of uh, the game being engaging and free and we have always tried to make it really fair and really easy to get everything you need to have a good time in a reasonable amount of time and that's been one of our mantras obviously when we released the um, Aeroflac it was released and it was I think around 10 million RP and it was in a way a massive step up from the other lower priced items and um, you know what was interesting was that it, 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 it players were suddenly playing the game a lot more and for a lot longer as a result of um, this and it felt a bit like a lot of our players had just got everything in the game and they just needed something to play for and, and this gave them something to play for and I said perhaps we kind of overcooked that and released a few things that were at that higher price point too often. We didn't put enough things on the road in between. And I think players are, are happy for there to be some things in the game that take an awful long time to get because there's always they always want something to 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 aspire to and to have as a goal. But I think that they want there to be a gradu graduation on the road to that, and I think that's what we've tried to address with today today's RP reductions is to try and create a much more kind of gradual road to the most expensive thing in the game. I mean in terms of just time, you know, it's hard to say. I mean you know, I you know, I hope that we could give you enough content and fun for you to enjoy playing Robocraft for hundred hours. And I would hope that you would comfortably get a tier ten robot and a decent a number of tier ten robots in that time and have a good variety of robots and play without ever spending a penny. And and as long as that's achievable I'd be pretty happy. Okay, yeah, I mean I think that's what everyone has been kind of feeling recently with the modules and the Aeroflak and the missile launcher, etc. being very expensive. Suddenly people who are just now getting to 25k ranking, there's a, there is a big step, like you said, before the next shiny thing and then there's a bigger step if you want several of them. If there's more in intermediate items, I can certainly understand that would be a bit better, a bit more gradual for people. Something to work towards which won't take an extraordinary long time, something like that. I promise you, the new thing we release next week will not Ooh. cost ten, 10 million RP. Ooh, that's something shiny. Okay, fantastic. Okay, the last one I've got currently on my list is this. How about a... Okay, that was actually really... That's, that's worded really weirdly, and being dyslexic, that completely threw me off. The basic <laughs> gist of the question is... Um, with nano weapons being a bit weird at the moment in terms of how they're used and people getting used to them, there's been quite a few people thinking of different ideas for them, different um, side functions since they're, no, since they're no longer doing damage. And one of the ones which keeps on coming up is either providing a shield for an ally or perhaps draining energy in some way or even giving energy to an ally, something like that. Would there perhaps ever be more uses for the nano weapon as healing some people feel is a bit less powerful than other people think more? But you, but it, it's very changed at the moment, I think, is the best yeah, way of yeah. putting it. I definitely understand that feeling from people who used to play Nano a lot, because for that, for those players, I can imagine it just feels very different. And, and I can really understand people perhaps feeling like they're no longer big fans of the weapon or old 
players that never used the nano now having them on their bottom feeling they're quite useful as a secondary weapon. Um, I mean, I love all the ideas that you just suggested. And for us, we, what we've been trying to do is, is compartmentalize those ideas into separate components. So the idea of putting a, a shield on a friend or the idea of um, those, you know, adding other functions to the nano. We would like, we would compartmentalize and add as separate components that you can choose to add or not add to your robot. Yeah, that, uh, so, so sorry. We're, we're, fa we're fairly happy with where the Nano is at the moment. It's really good to see lots of players finally using them as a secondary weapon on their robot. Mm. We're quite liking that. And um, we've, we've, between us, we've played a few games as a as a pure Nano. And, you know, you, you still feels like you can make the difference in a battle. Yeah, I will actually completely um, completely agree with that because I think almost every robot I've got currently in maximum ranking that, that have actually changed since the maximum um, loadouts came out has at least one na nano weapon somewhere just in case. It's been my ultimate secondary weapon at the moment. <laughs> I suppose it's going to get harder and harder to choose uh, which things to have on your robot as we add more and more things over time. I mean. The great thing about Robocraft is we just got so many ideas from the from the uh, community on features like that that we're just never ever going to run out of new parts to make. Yeah, and with that, actually, it leads on. Oops, there's a, leads on to the first question from the chat that's been asked quite a bit. Um, if you're okay to answer a couple of questions from the chat right now, yeah, yeah, there, there's been questions all the way through this stream, so there's plenty to choose from. The one I keep seeing pop up is the maximum CPU limit at the moment. With so many things being introduced, which are quite expensive, will there ever be a higher CPU limit, perhaps? When CPU is the factor for determining your your battle um, matchmaking and such. I think ever since we've launched this game, the biggest single question that's constantly been asked is, "Can I have more CPU?" <laughs> and obviously, we're quite receptive to the idea. So I'm going to be vague and say, "We know you want it, and we want to give it to you, and we might surprise you." Okay. That's what I'm going to say. Okay, brilliant. Okay, so um, actually, one question as well I've seen, which isn't one I, I've actually thought of myself, is um, with Free Jam, have you ever. Well, this is really in the future, so this is going to be a vague answer, probably at, at best. <laughs> with Free Jam, have you ever thought of other games for the future? Because I'm certain perhaps Robocraft wasn't the only idea ever yeah. floating around. Yeah, I mean, with the, the, I mean, the Free Jam team, and we, the Free Jam team is full of game developers, and the one thing you can't do is stop game developers thinking of ideas for games. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, we would love to be able to make other games, and we would love to be able to take Robocraft into many other spaces itself. Um, because we don't just see Robocraft as a combat game, even mm. if it's fairly limitless. So, there's many ideas that are really tangential that include Robocraft and ideas for other games that too. I mean, all I can say is that we don't have time for that stuff. We're just so, <laughs> it's, we're, we're totally laser focused on Robocraft. You know, hopefully we can make Robocraft successful enough to give us the chance to, to do more to do more Robocraft and more other things in the future. But you know, until we we've really made a success of Robocraft. Okay, uh, another question from chat, and, and this is quite a fun one, and I hope you've got an answer for this one. <laughs> What's your favourite weapon, personally, when you're playing Robocraft? Uh, or, or combination of weapons now, actually. It's changed. Uh, I, was, uh, I would admit to being a gunbed fanatic for a long time, and I recently changed to a high alpha strike DPS drone. Um, so I'm quite liking being fragile, but um, getting around the map quickly. So I'm currently flying a drone with two mega plasmas and one mega SMG, and feeling quite powerful. That was the that was the reason why we made a couple of the tweaks recently. Just felt that uh, me and Dropping were doing too well <laughs> in battle with our little <laughs> drones. So um, yeah, we were making some tweaks. Um, yeah. So I mean, I, I like. 
I try to enjoy playing all types of weapons because if any one of them feels underwhelming or you know a bit crap, then we'd like to think that we can do something about it and just bring it back into the mix and make it enjoyable. So, and we're, we're pretty happy with where all the weapons are at the moment. We're really happy with how Maximum No Doubt has gone, and so um, really excited about the next steps. We feel like. So the question everyone has been asking in chat, I must have seen it at least a hundred times now, will there ever be boats or an aquatic movement type? Oh, Which of course links to the map question earlier, so that's a lot of a lot of possibilities there, I think. I mean that that was always part of the vision. The, 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 the vision was always the original vision was was different planets with different kinds of atmospheres you know, gravities, liquid, lava, that kind of stuff. And um, those ideas are definitely still solid. They're, they're just not things that are right near on the roadmap or, or things that are certainly locked in. But, you know, they, they, they fall into the category of many things, I think, from Robocraft. And they're, they're kind of, they're kind of no-brainers. You kind of should do these things at some point, surely. Um, and so, for us, it's always just, you know, it's not, a, for us, I mean, the harder thing to say in Robocop is, you know, for us, is what don't you do? And what do you do next? Because most ideas are feasible and cool. So, <laughs> um, uh, yeah, it's not close, let's say. It's not something we're working on. Hmm. Okay, so, what, I mean, oh, sorry. It'll be tough, as you can understand, but it, you know, utterly cool as well. So, I would love to. Ultimately, if we're still around, you know, in a few years' time, and we still have loads of players playing the game, and we and we have hit at beta and have all those other things that we want to do in the game, then those are the things we're going to be focusing on. You know. Okay. Yeah, I can certainly see that. Um, so another question here, which is a ve which is a very cool one, but again again ties to maps. It seems that people are a little bit map crazy at the moment. Um, will there ever ever be terrain which deforms or can be destroyed or edited during a battle? For instance, plasma hitting a piece of terrain, then removing a chunk of it. I can only imagine the lag that would cause, but um, even so. I think deformable terrain is not something that would be no, okay. so we're going to be doing soon, you know. But it, it's such a game changer. Mm. For, for us, a bigger thing to do first, for example, would be to make it so that robots can collide correctly and physically correctly <laughs> with, with, with each other, so that you can push people and lift people and, and, and that kind of stuff. And so that's more important to us to achieve first before anything like that. And so that is the end of the interview. Thank you so much for watching. As you could probably tell, we were forced to abandon the stream a little bit early due to the Skype issues. Sadly, sometimes you cannot plan around issues that just randomly occur on the day. I would like to take this opportunity to thank the Free Jam team for allowing me to participate in their birthday celebrations. It was a lot of fun. The stream before this sadly was removed from footage because it was so glitchy in the end, but that was me playing with a couple of the other devs just in a couple of team death matches, a couple of battle arenas. It was a lot of fun and a big thank you to Mark Simmons for joining in in the Q&A at the end. Hopefully if we ever do something like this in the future, we will use something that isn't Skype. So thank you all for watching the video. If you have enjoyed, then of course, likes, favourite, shares, comments, all that good stuff helps out me, helps out the channel, and most importantly, shows that Robocraft is something you wish to see continued in the future. Thank you again and goodbye. In the description there will be links to Mark's Twitter along with various other links to Robocraft related stuff. As it was their birthday celebration, it's only fair we give them as much support as possible after this video. Thank you for watching and goodbye.